What is up, YouTube? Today we're gonna be going over the not so overused Luma Fade transition. And if you guys are new to this channel, my name is Sam Aldrich, AKA Sam the Cameraman. And each and every week we come out with new DaVinci Resolve tutorials, video reviews on different products. So if you haven't already, make sure you guys are subscribing, become a part of the camera crew, and do not miss out on any videos that we put out. And uh, let's just get into this DaVinci Resolve tutorial. All right, guys, now that we are back here in DaVinci Resolve 16, let's go over this Luma Fade transition. And as you guys can see right here, I have my two clips in my timeline. And these are the two clips that you guys saw in the beginning of the video. And as you can see, my bottom layer is a little bit longer than my top layer because I want this bottom layer to be the final clip that we see in the very end of this transition. So you always want to have that just a little bit longer than your top layer or however long you want that clip to actually last. And uh, once you have that all figured out, what you want to do is come down here, highlight both of your clips, right click and hit new fusion clip. And once that is done, what you want to do is make sure your playhead is over your fusion clip and click down here in the fusion tab. And let's bring this into fusion. All right, now that we're in Fusion, this is what you're going to see when you first come in. We have our Media 1 in, Media 2 in, and our Media Out node. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here and hit this little box. What that's going to do is make this a single viewer, and it is going to give us a little bit more room if I pull this down and zoom this in. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have our clips set up right. And to do that, what we want to do is we want to just click on this and drag it up into our viewer and that's going to be our underwater node and actually what you can do if you want to stay organized is right click these nodes and you come over here to rename and let's call this underwater and we'll call this one waterfall that way we don't get those mixed up and we can uh, stay organized now our underwater node should be the background and if you just hover over this little arrow it's going to say background and our waterfall should be on the foreground which is it is but if they were wrong all you have to do is click on your merge node and hit command T and that's going to switch them but we'll hit command or control T and switch them back to the way we need them and we're going to click on our media out drag it up into our viewer so that's what we're working with right now that's going to be our final output that's going to be what you see in the edit page all right, so now that we have everything lined up, what we want to do is take our foreground node, which is going to be our waterfall, select that, and you want to hit shift spacebar. That is going to bring up your select tool menu, and we just want to type in Luma. And that's going to bring up our Luma here. We want to select that and add that into our node tree. And it's already, if, if you had selected your uh, foreground node, which is our waterfall node, it'll automatically add that into uh, your node pipeline. If not, all you gotta do is just make sure you hold shift and just drag it in to where the foreground node is. Now with our Luma key added in and with it selected, we can already see that it's already doing something to our image here. But what we wanna do is we want it to fade in and melt away our scene and kind of like bring it us into this underwater world. So what we want to do is come over here, let's go to our very first frame of this sequence, and let's take this over here in our inspector tab. If you do not see this inspector tab and it looks something like this, all you gotta do is select inspector. And you're gonna have all these controls as long as you have the Luma key node selected. And we can control our channel, how we key this out, whether we want to key it on the blue channel, green channel, red channel, alpha channel, luminance, and so forth. We're going to use luminance because that is going to control the highlights and like the shadows and like the dark parts of your uh, your image. And that's how we want to key this out, Luma Fade transition name. So what we want to do is we want to bring all of this, let's bring it up. And as you can see, that took away the foreground. That's because we are keying away the low end of this. It's taking away the darks and going to reveal the highlights. But we want to take away the highlights and reveal the darks. So all you have to do is come down here and hit invert. And that's exactly what it did. Now, there's nothing wrong with it doing it this way. I just feel that with these two images, it looks much cooler to have it fade in from the brighter part of your image than the darker part of the image. So that's why we hit the invert button. Now with this selected and our highs all the way up and you can see we can't adjust it anymore, but there's still 
some of the image you say. Well, don't worry. All we gotta do is come over to the high end and let's just type in the number two and it takes it right away, just like that. That simple, that easy, nothing to it. So now what we can do is I know that I wanna bring this down to about like 1.1 and bring this up to about 1.1. I know from previously editing this that those are the numbers that work, but all you gotta do is just play around with it and see what works best for your edit. If you bring that down, as you can see, it's still showing. So we bring it right here and it's gone right there. So we could even come a little bit lower than 1.1. And all you gotta do is once you have those numbers set, just hit the keyframe button on your first frame of your sequence. Now it's come in about 15 frames, 14, 15 frames, and we're gonna keyframe it again. And all this is doing is telling your sequence, do not let this transition do anything until these points, like we wanna have these settings stay put and not change at all. Because we wanna, you know, we wanna see the scene. We don't wanna like make it go away right away. So now what we can do is come up to your timeline and find out when these clips, you know, hard cut when they change. Now for us, on these two clips is on frame 60. So what we wanna do at this point is we wanna bring all of these completely down. We wanna control our highs and our lows and just tweak it all the way down. And as you can see, we revealed the underwater image. And you could honestly be done right there if you really wanted. That could be your Luma fade transition. We could watch this back and it just fade right in. But, however, there's a couple other things that we can do to this transition to make it look a little bit better. So if you want to just come over here and select where the transition starts and if we hold control or command and use our scroller wheel to zoom in on our image, as you can see these edges are kind of digital, they look kind of choppy and for some instances that might be cool, might work out for you, but for me I want it a little bit smoother. So you just come down here to blur and we're just going to pull that up just a little bit. If you see, if you pull it way up, it starts blurring the lines tremendously and for sky replacements using the Luma here, that can be something that works out in your favor tremendously. But for this, all we want to do is just blur those edges a little bit so they don't look so digital. So I'm thinking right about there. That looks good to me, about 0.31. If we zoom out, that looks, that looks much, much better to me. And now if you really wanted to, um, you could use the contract and expand and the gamma controls right down here to fine tune your edges. I use that a lot more when it comes to like my sky replacements or if I'm trying to replace different like lenses or anything or windows or anything like that within an image just because it allows you a little bit more adjustment on the edges. But for this, we really don't need that at all. So I'm not going to mess with those at all, but that's what those do. And if we actually go back to the edit page and we can watch this through, this will be this would actually be a complete Luma fade transition already. And this is what it will look like once it's all rendered through and the Luma fade transition is complete. All right, y'all, so that is it for the Luma Fade transition in DaVinci Resolve. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and let me know in the comments also how you guys are doing. I know that it's a crazy time in the world right now with everything going on, and I would like to know how you guys are holding up through all of this. I genuinely care about you guys. You guys make these videos possible for me and have gotten me to where I'm at, and I appreciate each and every one of you. So let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. I know me and my wife are doing good here in... Uh, Tennessee and I'm just grateful that we both are healthy and grateful our families are doing well So hope you all are doing well as well But I am announcing the giveaway that I've been talking about for a while now next week Monday or Tuesday So make sure you guys like I said are subscribing hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on this giveaway I'm super excited. It's our first giveaway on this channel. So become a part of the camera crew subscribe and um, maybe you guys will win uh, What I have to offer but I'm announcing it Monday or Tuesday, so I can't let you know now. But anyways, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. <sighs>